43 years ago, on March 13, 1979, the Caribbean island of Granada witnessed a historic socialist revolution which would change the fate of the country forever. The revolution overthrew US-backed dictator Eric Gehry and ushered in Maurice Bishop of the New Jewel Movement. The New Jewel Movement stood for the joint endeavour for welfare, education and liberation. Though the People's Revolutionary Government under Bishop only lasted for four years, major advancements to pave the way for socialism, that is industrialization, a significant working class and popular education were focused upon by the government. So what was the revolution in Granada all about? Granada, a former colony of the United Kingdom, is a small Caribbean island nation with a population of a little more than 100,000. The island was initially populated by the indigenous Arawaks and Kalinago or Caribs who were killed by the French colonizers. The British at the end of the Seven Years' War took over the island and brought enslaved people from Africa and today most people now are of African descent. The island gained independence from Britain on 7th February 1974 and Eric Gehry became the Prime Minister. His rule was marked by poverty, unemployment, inflation and massive violence by the Mongoose Gang. This was a private militia notorious for silencing critics and murdering opponents of the Prime Minister. It had received training from Chile under Augusto Pinochet. This led to widespread dissatisfaction among the masses, which soon escalated into a full-fledged movement inspired by the US civil rights movement and other liberation struggles. Five years of struggle culminated in the formation of the NJM, previously an alliance of the Joint Endeavour for Welfare, Education and Liberation and Organisation for Revolutionary Education and Liberation, ORIL, and the Movement for Assemblies of the People, MAP. NJM in order to counter the authoritarian Gary regime, took up arms and established the National Liberation Army. It seized power in 1979 and Maurice Bishop became the Prime Minister and the People's Revolutionary Government was established. The PRG soon introduced plans to combat poverty, improve manufacturing and infrastructure, educate and develop skills of the population as well as promote tourism. Social wage was introduced in the country, following which medical and educational services were made free of cost. In line with this, school uniforms and books were made free, scholarships were provided to students and a literacy program was introduced. Measures like the Housing Repair and Construction Program improved quality of housing and increased access to it. The GDP per capita of the country almost doubled from US dollars 450 in 1978 to US dollars 870 in 1983. Public enterprises also started to boom during this period. The Marketing and National Importing Board the National Transportation Service, a National Insurance Scheme and a Fisheries Processing Plant were all introduced during this period. Equal pay for equal work also came into effect under the PRG and maternity leave was introduced. As part of the development programs, there were also plans to build an international airport. The plans to build the airport increased tensions, however, with the United States as the Ronald Reagan administration, which took over in 1981, feared that it would be used by the Soviets. It was also during this time that Bishop visited the US and gave his renowned speech at Hunter College in Brooklyn, New York. In these times, it is becoming more and more difficult for developing third world countries to go forward. Because unfortunately, our economies remain by and large dependent on and tied to the capitalist world economies. And therefore, when the capitalist world goes through their cyclical crises, one after the other. It has an immediate effect on us. As we say at home, when the capitalist world catches a cold, we catch pneumonia. Bishop's fiery speeches gathered him huge popularity among the people as a firebrand leader. But this popularity among the masses also gave rise to internal divisions. His deputy prime minister, Bernard Coard, staged a coup in October 1983 and Bishop was put under house arrest. He was freed by the people, but while on their way to a mass rally, Maurice Bishop and his allies were executed by the armed forces on October 16, 1983. Within days, over 7,000 US troops invaded the island under the pretext of protecting the interests of US students on the island, as well as exaggerated claims of Cuban presence. The US had always kept a close watch on the island as it believed that Cuba was trying to expand its influence in the region as well as help draw together young radicals and radical movements in the Caribbean. The invasion resulted in the reversal of the gains of the PRG and the reinstitution of the former constitution, which had been suspended by Bishop. The legacy of the New Jewel movement and Maurice Bishop is still an inspiration for millions who imagine a world free from poverty, oppression and imperialism.